Hi, we are here to introduce our recent study published in the journal Neuron. This was a collaboration between my lab and Xiaorong's lab with co-authors Bo Shun, Liang, and Mingna. Our labs study neural system development, in particular how neural functions and their underlying circuits are shaped by experience. What a child experiences has profound impacts on brain development. For example, Chinese children can speak English as native speakers if they grow up in the U.S. In comparison, it's much more difficult for adults to learn a new language, suggesting that there are critical periods in neural development. In the lab, we use the mouse visual system to study neural development and critical periods. It is known that the timing of the critical period is controlled by both genetic and environmental factors. However, the significance of such timing regulation was not clear. So we decided to address this issue in this study. Neurons in the visual cortex are known to be orientation sect. For example, here we are recording from the neuron as we present visual stimuli to the mouse. As you can hear from the sounds of the action potentials, this particular cell responded strongly to horizontal gradings, but not to vertical gradings. In our previous study, we showed that the cortical cells are initially tuned to different orientations through the two eyes. During the critical period, they match their binocular orientation preference in an experience-dependent manner. This discovery therefore allowed us to study what happens to binocular matching when the timing of the critical period is altered. In particular, we studied a line of transgenic mice that overexpress brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF. In this BDNF overexpression mice, the maturation of inhibition is accelerated, which leads to a precocious critical period in the visual cortex. We were surprised to find that many cortical neurons in these mice after normal critical period were still tuned to very different orientations through the two eyes, even though their monocular tuning properties were completely normal. For example, this cell responds the most to oblique orientations through the left eye, but to horizontal orientations through the right eye. Interestingly, we found that the binocular matching deficit was specific to complex cells but not simple cells. Simple and complex cells are two successive stages in the visual cortex. I then studied the timeline of their binocular matching process and found that the simple cells match before the complex cells. In the BDNF overexpression mice, the binocular matching process does not start earlier. The precocious closure of cortical plasticity actually prevents the matching of complex cells. This finding suggests that the matching deficit in the BDNF overexpression mice could potentially be rescued if the matching process is shifted earlier. To test this, we wear the mice in an enriched environment. The enriched environment had a cage that's about five times larger than the standard ones. It contained a number of toys and a running wheel. Every enriched cage housed five to six adult females with one or two liters of pups at the same time. With such setting, we showed that the environmental enrichment could indeed advance the time course of binocular matching in normal wild-type mice, and it completely rescued the matching deficit in the BDNF overexpansion mice. We then asked what molecular mechanism might mediate the effect of environmental enrichment on visual system development. DNA is packaged into chromatin, and the fundamental subunit of chromatin is a nucleosome composed of four core histones. Histone isolation is an epigenetic mechanism that regulates gene expression through chromatin modification. Here we examine whether enriched environment affects histone isolation in the developing visual cortex. With Western blood, we demonstrate that pups raised in enriched environment displayed a pronounced increase in the acetylation level of histone 4 lysine 5 in the visual cortex. Given this exciting result, we then tested whether H4 acetylation mediated enriched environment's effect. We injected a histone deesterase inhibitor TSA into normally weared mice during development and found that it increased H4K5 acetylation. 
Importantly, the TSA treatment was able to completely mimic the enriched environment's effect on binocular matching in both wild-type and BDNF overexpression mice. In conclusion, we have shown that a critical period at the right time is essential for binocular development. The detrimental impact of its genetic misregulation can be rescued by environmental manipulations through epigenetic mechanisms. These results must reveal an exciting link between genetic and environmental factors in neural development. Looking ahead, we are now geared up to study the molecular pathways that link environmental enrichment to histone isolation and to visual development. Thanks for your interest and stay tuned for our future discoveries.